Okay, so Bloom filters implement a set. Uh, I've been concerned about the contains operation. Hey, here's a string. Uh, hey, set, do you contain this string? Yes or no? And we get this asymmetric answer back. Uh, there might be false positives, but no false negatives. Okay, um, what are other operations you might want to do on a set? Well, there's union and intersection, and I guess negation. Negation, I'll let you, let you to think about that. If you want to negate a set, well, I guess you just take the same answers and you flip them. Is that still a bloom filter? No, you turn your false negatives into false positives, um, which is not a bloom filter. But it is, you know, maybe that's still useful or something. But generally, you can't take a bloom filter, negate it, and still get a something that has the same constraints about the false positives but no false negatives coming back. Okay, but what about union and intersection? Um, okay, how would we go ahead and take the union or the intersection? I just give you, I've already added a bunch of things to a, a bloom filter A, and I've added a bunch of things to a bloom filter B, and now I say, hey, I want to go ahead and act as if I had the union of A and B and the intersection of A and B. How might I construct those, and will it really work? That's all I'll answer. So you probably guessed, hey, yeah, I can combine, if I have this uh, bloom filter here and this bloom filter here, I could probably combine them by doing a bitwise operation for every at every index. And I have bitwise and and bitwise or. Uh, here's the question, bitwise or, is that union or is that intersection? And similarly, bitwise and, will that give us the intersection or the union of these two sets? Go ahead and pause and answer those two questions. Okay, I'm pausing. Uh, yeah, good, you got it right. Um, oops, here we are. Uh, or, a, doing a bitwise or is going to give us an, a union. Why? Uh, you're, you're in the union, you're in A or A union B, if you're in A, or you're in B, and we're taking the bitwise or. So for instance, we set that to one because that bit was set in B. And we don't set that, and we do set this, and this. Okay. Oops. Okay, so yeah, um, we'll see if it really works, but that's the bitwise or, and in general, or corresponds to the um, union. Notice that the logical symbol for or is often a wedge, and the logical symbol for and is a Oh, sorry, the and is a wedge and or is a V. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and that's not coincidence that they're shaped the same way, so. Okay, uh, yeah, you're in the intersection A and B if, you're, you're, you're in the intersection if you're in A and you're in B. So, and taking the bitwise and of these would give us this table here. Most things occasionally get a one. Let's go to find all the ones. That's all there is. Okay. So here's the question I want to ask now. So we can take these bitwise and and ors. Do these really correspond to the sets we think them? I know we did this bitwise thing, but when you step back and look at, hey, treat this new thing as a bloom filter, and you're given a string, call your three hash functions on it, and look at those three bits, etc. Um, yeah, will it really work? Uh, Let's find out if it will work for one or for the other, or both or neither. Okay, so here's the question I want to ask. Uh, give me some string S. If we take, so we're going to call it, I'm going to take the name of these two tables, Aura and Andy. These new bloom, you know, bloom filters I've constructed. The question is, do they correspond to anything interesting? Anything corresponding to A or B? Uh, in particular, if Aura says that if we look up a string S in Aura and we get back false, does that mean that S was not in A or B. It was S was in neither A nor B. Okay, so let's answer that question. In fact, go ahead and you answer that question. Pause. And we'll answer a related question too, um, which is slightly different. If you think about it, it's really slightly different, but it sounds almost the same. Uh, what if I called contains of A and that string? And then I also called contains of B and that string and combined them. Um, maybe that's almost asking the same thing. Maybe it's a little different, but works out the same. Go ahead and pause and answer these two questions. Okay, so uh, say that 
S, uh, we asked Aura, we had we took the string I borrow it and asked, hey, are you in in here? Well, that means that uh, if if we said false, that means, gosh, uh, you know, maybe we looked up these three, we hashed the string I borrow and it gave us these three indices, and I got a z I said if I said false, it's because at least one of them was zero. And hey, if one of them was zero, A of that gave a zero, and B of that gave a zero, so it couldn't have been an A, right? A will say which also A would say no if you asked it contains, and B would say no if you ask it contains, and it couldn't be in there. The contains is a true answer. So um, if A can if contains returns false, does that mean it does? It means that S was neither an A nor B, which is the what we wanted. Uh, so this works correctly. Um, since uh, uh, that, uh, no false positives on A, B. Okay, uh, but now there's the complementary question. Really, there's two questions going on. If our function returns false, is that correct? And if our function returns true, is that correct? So uh, if aura of, oh, sorry, if contains of aura and some string I borrow and uh, return true. Gosh, does that mean it was in both? Well, now the logic gets a little bit tricky since we're dealing with potentially false positive. We're allowed to give a false positive, right? So we don't actually need to give a correct answer here at all, but would would like to try. So let's just think about it in that context. Um, does it mean that it contains of aura s true? So let's look at our table aura and say we hash to uh, this bit here and uh, this bit here. Okay, the three that I've marked with the dot. Okay, so I gave it some string uh, attached to those three locations. Aura says, yep, I think the string is in here. Does that mean it had to be, uh, was it really in either A or B? Well, let's look at this. Um, Gosh, it definitely wasn't an A. Why A had a zero in this particular example? So got to be in B. And yep, B was set on this bit and this bit. And oh, but it wasn't set on this bit. So gosh. Um, so here's the related question. Um, uh, we might go ahead and return true because of some bits from A and other bits we got from B. Um, and so A wouldn't have given, A would have said false, B would have said false, it shouldn't be in the intersection. So what does this mean? Uh, our error bound gets worse. You have more false positives than if we just kept A and B uh, versus, again, the comparison is, uh, I want to compare that to, hey, I started off with a fresh table and anytime somebody had added to A or then added to B, we went and added it to this table over here and built it up. Uh, that's sort of the good comparison table. That's like, if I didn't have to cheat and do this bitwise squeeze, um, gosh, I could get better, uh, better conditions then. Or could I? Maybe not. Let me think about that again. Suppose all the things that got added to A and then all the things that got added to B instead, I started with a fresh set and added them all to this set over here. Gosh, I guess the same bits, I would get exactly the same bits that were in A or B. So um, yeah, I it's as good as if I'd started with one. Mushing them is as good as having started with a fresh table and added the same things but I get more false positives than if I'd maintained two separate tables, which kind of makes sense. If I've maintained two separate tables, I'm using twice as many bits. And so we know that if you make your M bigger, keep more bits, you can do get a lower error bound. Um, but reasonably so. Okay. Um, and I think it might be something along the lines of the error that A had plus the error that B had.
something along those lines. It's bounded by that. Okay, uh, great. So that's aura. So we can go ahead and take the union of the bitwise or of two bits and get a set that corresponds to the union. It's not quite as good as having kept those two sets originally, but it is as good as having added them all to our union. By the way, one side note, uh, in order to do this, A and B, if we want to take the bitwise un uh, union or intersection of them, what do we need to do? What needs to be the same about A and B? Ah, they need to be the same length and be using the same three hash functions or same K hash functions. Okay, so, uh, da, da, da. that is union. Okay, so yeah, we, we can take the union, although performance might degrade. What about intersection? Uh, well, again, performance might degrade, but no more than if it kept, if we were always bound to keeping m bits, then our performance isn't degrading. So, okay. Um, intersection, that's the bitwise and. Um, so, if Andy of, we have some string, we ask Andy, uh, and Andy says false, I'm not in there. Does that mean that it was not in both A and B? So let's go ahead and look. Suppose we ask a question of Andy and we get this bit and this bit and this bit. Okay. Um, well, if Andy says false, it means one of these bits was zero. If one of these bits was zero, then they weren't both one. It wasn't in one set or the other. Ah, and it, so it means one of A or B was zero. And if one of A or B was zero, then it couldn't have been in that set. Uh, because if it had ever been added to A, A would have set that bit. If it had been added to B, B would have set that bit. So if it's not in one or the other, it's not in both. So, okay, so hey, that means we're correct. Da, 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 da. Um, so, oops, wrong line here, go down here. Uh, if Andy says uh, false, I should mark my answers here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if Andy says false, that is the correct answer. Okay, good. Um, and does it mean that it's not true that A, so if you look at what A says and, and the answer with what B says, uh, that that will be false? That's true. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, again, it's because there's no false positives that if A says it wasn't in there or B it says it wasn't in there, they're correct and our answer is overall correct. Okay, now, what if Andy of, I take some string S, Andy of S says true. Does that mean it was in A and in B? So how do I get true? I go ahead, I need to get in fact, I think on this example, there's only three bits for one, so if I had three hash functions. Okay, great, A intersect B. Uh, if I if I say, yeah, yeah, I think it's, Andy says, yeah, I think that string was is in my set. Might be a false positive, but I think it's in here. Uh, well, would A say the same thing? Yeah, because if these are all three ones in the intersection, and they're all three set in A, and they're same three are set in B. So A would say, yep, I think it's in me. And B says, yep, I think that string is in this set as well. Um, and Andy says the same thing. So yeah, we do get that. Um, it was likely in each of those. Now again, there might be some error in here, and there might be some error in here. Um, there would have to be a false positive in both of them, actually. So I guess the... Again, the thing to compare is, hey, look at the set of, uh, look at taking A, building it up, taking B, building it up, and then later mushing them to get our intersection, versus ideally, uh, if it started with an empty uh, bloom filter and only added the things that were going to get added to both A and B, how would that compare? Ah, the exact same bits get set, is that true? I think that's not quite. I can have a, this might get set to one. Um, no, no, I, I think it would be exactly true. So I, I take that back. Yeah. So um, in this case, 
taking the intersection um, with and is kind of ideal. It's as good as if it's just been added just things that should have been added to start with. So, okay, and it's not increasing our, our error rates. Okay, so that is taking ands and ors. I guess maybe the takeaway point here is, well, first of all, that you can do this, but then the thinking point is, hey, realizing that taking this bitwise pattern doesn't, you know, I have a suspicion, I have an intuition that that might work, but it's not obvious. And as we saw, it sort of changes some of the error rates a little bit. And it's a little bit different than asking, hey, would the, either of the original sets have given the same answer if I query them respectively? Okay. We are done talking about balloon filters. Again, what's neat about balloon filters? It's just one of those neat ideas that I wouldn't have thought of in a million years. I would have heard, uh, I can't give a correct answer, and I would have just given up immediately. How good are they? Again, they don't use a whole lot of bits. You need to have a large table. Again, if we're going to add 100,000 items, you want maybe something 10 times larger than that, so you need like a million. Oh, but you only need a million bits. And if a bit is that eight bits or almost 10 bits, hey, we need about one bit per item that we're going to hold. And that's about as, as best, you know, it's hard to do much better than that. So um, at the expense of accuracy.